Hey guys, EBP Man here, and today I want to take a look at a Insignia product. Hey guys, EBP Man here, and today I want to take a look at the Insignia Voice portable voice activated speaker. Let's check it out. Now, Insignia is a brand that uh, most of us here in the U.S. are accustomed to hearing from, and it's a Best Buy brand. Uh, this is a portable speaker that has some unique features. First of all, it is Google Assistant enabled. So just like the Google Home and uh, some of the other Google products that are on the market today that has Google built in, this speaker has uh, the Google AI of Google Home built inside. So that means that all the same functionality that you have with uh, the two Google speakers that are available today, you'd be able to have with this solution. But this actually takes the Google Home to the next level. And let me explain why. First of all, it has a built-in battery, which means this is completely portable. Not only can you have it in a specific part of your home, but you can move it around without worrying about having to plug this in, something that uh, Google's products uh, cannot today. Uh, the second thing it has, uh, which you're seeing more and more devices have, it has uh, this far field of voice recognition. So it's supposed to do uh, much better than the original Google Home when it comes to the, uh, no, you know, listening to music and being able to get the assistant to wake up and do what you needed to do. So we're going to see that in a couple seconds. It supports two Wi-Fi bands, 2.4 and 5. Uh, we know that it will support um, Android OS and as well as uh, the uh, App OS. Uh, it can connect to other devices via Bluetooth, which is good. So this is very comparable to the Google Home. And then uh, it also has uh, some great sound. Now, because of it being Google enabled, it's going to support Chromecast and you know all the features there. But what to me sets it apart, in addition to it being battery powered, is the fact that it has a clock in front of it, which you know it's something that really the Google devices are missing. So this is going to be able to tell you the time and it's also going to be able to show you the temperature and you notice it has some nice controls on top so let's go ahead and do an unboxing let's see how what this is all about um, it's available today on Best Buy it's actually on sale um, at Best Buy so let's go ahead and check it out now in the box you're going to find your speaker and then you're going to find uh, some accessories here uh, which are uh, pretty much just your your power plug and it uses a standard power plug so it's not using a USB-C or, or micro USB which is kind of a little disappointing I wish they had adopted that. Uh, the unit itself is relatively small so we'll put it right here face it down so you can see uh, not that wide at all and you can see how tall it is it's it's a little bit taller I would say and wider uh, from a dimension perspective than the original Google Home but still it, it has a decent size footprint uh, so You'll notice that there's this cloth material going all the way around. Uh, it's black and it's only available in one color that I saw, and that's this one. It has your uh, on-off here, power, and also your mute button. And that's it from the controls. Uh, there are some controls that will show up here once we power this up. And on the bottom, you'll notice that you have your speaker. Uh, well, it'll be interesting to see if the speaker also comes out through the sides, that it's not just uh, pointing downwards. I hope it's not. And then here's the little cable that you'll plug in, as well as your reset button. And I think that's it. It looks like it, oh, it has a little handle here for you to pick it up. You can see that right there? To carry it around. So the interesting thing here is on startup, it starts out just like any other Google device. Uh, it basically... Uh, welcomed me, it greeted me by saying, hi, this is your Google Assistant, and it said, uh, please use your Google device to um, connect it. So the neat thing about it is that there's no additional apps that you have to install. You can use your existing Google Home. Uh, you'll notice here in the front, it does have the information side that says set, uh, and that's where your clock is going to show. So let me go ahead and pair it to my home. I'm using the Google Home app. So now once you go into your Google Home app, it's uh, this is where I have my mini in my home. You'll notice that it automatically saw that the insignia is there ready for setup. So I'm going to go ahead and select it and then go through the standard process as you would setting any Google device. So I'm going to change our audio sources just for a couple minutes so that we can see um, how the features, the Google feature works. Now, pretty much, again, it's going to work exactly as Google Home with uh, one exception that I've been able to find so far in testing. So first of all, you're going to notice that you have the time and you also have the temperature. Now, the temperature is going to appear and disappear based on, um, I think it's a couple minutes. So if you want to see the temperature, you're going to have to invoke the uh, Google command to be able to ask it what the temperature is and it will remain on the screen. So let's go ahead and try that. Hey, Google, what's the temperature outside? 
In all sip right now, it's 43. Now you see how it popped up and it'll stay there for a couple of minutes and then eventually it will disappear. Uh, you could ask it other things and say, uh, hey Google, will it rain tomorrow? No, rain is not expected tomorrow in Alsip. The forecast is 42 degrees and partly cloudy. All right. Uh, so very much functions the exact same way. So you're going to be able to access, uh, ask the system to uh, things like to show things on Chromecast, to connect to Netflix. You can play music on Spotify. Again, all the same features that are available. Now over here, it's kind of hard to see, but there's some controls here and you can actually modify the display. But here is your volume setting, so you can increase the volume, you can reduce the volume, and you can also mute it. Now on the back, the button that's in the back is going to give you a couple options. Uh, this is a multifunction button. Not only does it function as a mute, but if you press and hold it for like over 12 seconds, it also functions as a reset. So you want to make sure that you're careful, you're not holding it on uh, too long. Now, as we mentioned, this does have a battery uh, backup or a five hour battery that's gonna allow you to take this and move it from one location to another. So this could serve multiple purposes and why I like this is because it could be a, a an alarm clock. You can have this in your bedroom. It's a little tall, but not terribly too tall. Uh, and it would suit well as just something there that you can have to wake you up every morning or if you listen to music. So you can set alarms. You can also, it's gonna recognize the voices of multiple people if you have that set up. Now let's talk about the audio output. Uh, the audio, it does sound a bit louder than Google Home. Uh, the speakers that you saw actually are pointing outward. So it's not shooting the sound downward, it's actually going on the sides. Uh, so it does a really nice job of, of audio. One thing I have noticed that even though it has that far field type uh, technology for being able to control Google, it doesn't, it has a problem. So, or not so much a problem, but it's not as sensitive as I would say is the Google Mini. So it, as it's playing, you telling it to increase the volume, decrease the volume, sometimes it's gonna have a hard time listening to that. So what I found myself as I've been using is more and more when it doesn't respond to my voice, I have to come closer and actually uh, speak close to these mics. And when I do that, then it works fine. Uh, but once again, uh, it, it's probably a little worse, but no better than Google Home. Uh, but I find it not better than the Google Mini. Now the other limitation that you have with this is the fact that it does not support voice calling yet. So while it has the ability to Bluetooth to another speaker, so in your room, if you have a speaker, it doesn't really matter what brand, as long as it's a Bluetooth speaker, you would be able to use this to connect to it and then uh, stream music to it without a problem. Uh, you can merge this with other speakers in your home. So I can actually put this as part of a group and have all the speakers in my home Google branded and then Google enabled like this one is all playing the same song. Not a problem there. Uh, the other observation I had is that the shutdown process, like if you start it from, from off to on, it is not as fast as the Google uh, branded solution. So I find that the Home and the Mini are ready to go much faster than this device is. It's, it takes a little bit uh, longer. There may be some firmware updates that become available, but if you ever shut it down and you power it up, it's just going to take a little bit longer than some of the other devices. It's not minutes, but it's definitely not seconds. And like I mentioned, you will not be able to use Google, the voice dialing feature to call someone from this device, at least as of now. So this concludes uh, my review of the Insignia solution. Uh, again, the Google enabled speaker. I think it solves a lot of things for that you have with the Google Home limitation in the mini. One, it has the battery. Two, it has also a clock, right? And it's going to be able to give you um, some visual feedback that you don't have today. So if you have any comments or questions about this product, leave it in the comment area below. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. And as always, don't forget to share and subscribe. Thanks for watching.